Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Greg Furman, market analyst here at TraderPlanet.com and this is the Forex Weekly Outlook for the week of December the 13th, 2011. Now I think we're going to have another busy week ahead of us, very choppy markets uh, with everything that's happening in the Eurozone. We have the, the Fed this week. It's going to be a very, very choppy, choppy week. That's, that's the best way to say it. So let's see if we can break this down and get some sort of insight as to what's actually going on here. If we look at the dollar index, the key levels from vantage point, 78.53, 78.70, and 78.71 with a close of 78.68. We're basically running flat on the dollar index with it, with a slight upward bias. So when we break this down per crossover on the dollar index, the short term crossover is, is still flat. The medium is, is to the downside but very slightly and the long term is flat so again the triple cross has not completed it tells me that the dollar is still uh, somewhat bullish predicted short medium and long term differences completely flat so we're looking for a cue from the equity markets as to likely what the next move will be on the dollar along with what the Fed has to say of course the markets worried about QE3 I don't think there's going to be any QE3 uh, I think that the market is going to sell the dollar till probably the the middle part of the week and then they're going to start buying the dollar back that's the likely outcome here so when we look at things closer, we immediately want to look at these equities because they're a driving factor in the market. Uh, what, I, what I absolutely want to make sure that I'm pointing out here that draw everybody's attention to this particular candle right here. So this is what I would call a basically a Fed candle. And that's a terrible line, but uh, essentially what we have is about 70 unaccounted for points in the S&P 500. And in short, we all basically knew the S&P was 500. The S&P 500 was was oversold, and of course it was starting to move up in a corrective fashion. Now, what didn't help things was the Fed dumping liquidity into the system, catching everybody off guard, and in one single day we have gone from about the 1175, 1180 area almost to 1250. This is clearly uh, not a bullish thing for the equities. Now, what this, what this is, essentially, since we've made this move higher, the S&P 500's done very little. We still have a, a top up around the 1290 area that's that's been completely untested over the last uh, over the last uh, two months. So essentially, we're looking kind of bullish or kind of bearish. Excuse me. I, the predicted long-term difference here from vantage point is grossly grossly overbought my view is is that we're going to start a decline in the equity markets this is a very likely outcome our other indicators here our short-term crossover from vantage point has crossed to the downside it's trying to recapture the upside but this green candle is on friday after the european summit and that's not a again very low volume thin markets and a little bit of maybe good news out of the Eurozone, uh, but I don't see anything good coming out of that summit, and I think the equities are a one-way trade, which is sell into strength anywhere towards the pot, top of this line up around this 1290 area. Now, again, they're going to be a driving factor. The S&P 500 will be a driving factor for risk, so we have to keep a close eye on it. Right now, we still are in, in we still have uh, we st we're still minorly bullish here, but I, again, like what I expect is a rally for a day or two, and then midweek the the equities to fall and the dollar to strengthen. Light sweet crude oil, another driving factor, but I'm going to spend very little time with this because it is 100% correlated to the equity markets, the S&P 500. The S&P 500 goes up oil goes up and vice versa. We can see that we're testing that major support line and we've actually closed just barely above the three vantage point predicted moving averages. So probably one more little push up on the oil and then much like the S&P 500, we're likely to fall straight down. You can actually see in my opinion that oil is going to be a leading indicator here for the equity markets. The short term is crossed to the downside. The, the predicted MACD trigger, you can also see, has crossed, has, has been running flat and now is coming away from the trigger to the downside, not the upside. Predicted TSI, same thing. This is a huge warning sign. When we look at the other, term, the other crossovers from vantage point, the medium term crossover has just about completed. 
the long term crossover remains flat so again we've got we've got a, a signal here and what's what i really want to point out is you can see that same signal occurred last month right after the other failed european summit so we want to keep these things uh we want to keep this in the back of our head that if oil is a leading indicator or you know some months the oil would be the leading indicator and then the s p will follow it or the s p will be the leading indicator and oil will follow the s p so depending how this one plays out i would be leaning towards light sweet crude as the leading indicator here for the equity so we want to keep a, cl a close eye on both uh, for the metals, uh, the metals are not looking good. Uh, looking at this, gold, it looks ripe for a pretty substantial sell-off here. Uh, we, we can't say that for sure, but our indicators are completely flat. What's interesting with the metals uh, is that, or specifically gold, we can't break this zero line on the predicted MACD, the predicted TSI, same thing, sitting there flat. Hardly bullish, uh, hardly bullish. That's that's all I can say on the metals. And if I'm in a long metals contract, I would be looking at getting that off the table. Silver, same thing. Silver is going to follow the S&P 500, and even with the the move in the equity, silver still can't gain any traction. Uh, definitely a sell into strength on metals on silver more so than gold. Gold has a little different flavor, but uh, the silver, I, I think it's a solid sell. Now, as we move into uh, some of our currency pairs, these are all, these are going, I'm going to spend very little time with, with the Aussie, the New Zealand, and the CAD because it's basically all the same trade, guys. That's what it is. And this trade, again, the Aussie US, looking at the indicators, the predicted long-term difference from 